Hello, I'm Jacob and you're watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. For decades, Gransford Brooks has been the name in premium production axes. It's a bit of a boutique market segment and yet their name is so dominant that even people outside of their market are often familiar with their names. Today, however, there are many brands that can compete with Gransfers, uh, not only for price, but also for outright quality. So that's what we're here today to talk about. What we are looking at here today is axes from Council Tools Premium line, Hardcore Hardware, which also appears to be slightly rebranding as hardcore hatchets for their hatchet lines of knives, and obviously Gransfer Brooks. Now, I know a lot of people are going to complain that these hatchets are not directly comparable, and that is true. Sadly, we do not have examples from each of these manufacturers that are exactly the same size and exactly the same design or anything else. However, we can certainly compare fit and finish, overall quality, design, and value. What's interesting to me is that some of the people that comment the most about the value of knives, they'll comment, the Mora is better for half the price, will then turn around on other videos and comment that you can't compare two knives. Intrinsically, we are constantly evaluating value when we use our money and buy a product. So what I'm doing here today, we're going to be doing a little bit of performance testing, but we're going to keep in mind that with the different head weights and different handle lengths, we can't perfectly compare these to each other. So we're going to be focusing once again on fit and finish, quality, and value. With all of that being said, why did I pick these particular axes? Well, a uh, channel subscriber and friend has sent me this Gransfer Brooks. This is the Ray Mears Bushcraft Wilderness Axe. And uh, he also sent me a Hardcore Hardware uh, Supernaturalist. And so I had a couple of axes that were similar-ish because we are going to use these axes a little bit. I wanted to compare them to other axes that I own that are similar in use, if not exact dimensions. So the Council Tool uh, Pack Axe, uh, this one with a 24 inch handle, is fairly similar to the Grands here. And I have the Council Tool Velvet Hudson Bay Hatchet, which is kind of similar-ish to the Hardcore Hardware. So. I figured, what the heck, let's take them out here. There's definitely things that I can point out that will be uh, valuable for any consumer who's potentially looking at purchasing any of these axes when we take into account, again, fit, finish, quality, and price. So with that being said, let's look at the specs of these axes and get to work really quick before we do that guys if you enjoy this content please look at the description box below i've listed all of the ways that you can support this channel and under this video you will see some of my apparel which you can purchase directly from teespring they will ship it directly to you please consider doing that it makes such a big difference of course i've got patreon and buy me a coffee and stuff like that if that's what you prefer but let's get right into looking at the specs of these axes the Council Tool Pack Axe with the 24-inch handle here has a two-pound head, has a 24-inch handle. This is hickory, of course. All of these axes are hickory, so I'm not even going to mention it again. Um, it's made in America, and the head steel is 5160. These go for about $150. I've seen them online in different retailers from just under $150 to up to about $180, depending on where you get it from. Uh, if you can get them when they come out. I've done all kinds of stuff with this particular axe to include building bridges and stuff like that. It's a really, really practical tool. The Gransfer's Ray Mears Wilderness Axe here has a 1.76 pound head, about one and three quarters. Um, the handle is supposed to be 23.62 inches. I'll talk about that supposed to be in just a moment. Um, this is made in Sweden. The price goes from about $173 to $195. Uh, 
The steel is uh, recycled mystery steel. The hardcore hammers or hardcore hatchets, whatever they're saying at the moment. Uh, Supernaturalist. The head is about 17 ounces, so just over a pound. It's got an 18-inch handle. The MSRP is about $120 with the axe mask. You can buy it without the uh, sheath or the mask here for just under 100 bucks. The steel is $41.40. And uh, I've used this guy a good bit, and we've got quite a bit to say about it today. And this is the Council Tool Velvacut Hudson Bay belt hatchet. I've used this guy uh, quite a bit. I've actually even uh, climbed some trees and done some delimbing uh, with it way, way up there. Super handy little axe. The head is one and a quarter pounds, so just a little bit heavier than the hardcore hardware. The handle is only 14 inches long, so a fairly short handle. And uh, the, the steel is 5160 and the MSRP is about 115 bucks. Uh, that is with the mask included. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to get to a bit of limbing with these axes and then we're going to look at them up close and talk about fit and finish. However, I just wanted to say two things really quick. Number one, this is real. I've recently been accused of using a fake backdrop here uh, uh, and being, you know, it's some kind of conspiracy going on. Yeah, this is this is my backyard. So uh, it is a waterfall that is not currently running and it is also not frozen. Also, because I'll be asked in the comment section later, this uh, fanny pack is the best fanny pack on the planet made by Combat Art Training. I'll put a link to him in the description box below. Carry all of my stuff, my ADC firearm, I've got notes, I've got gloves, I've got ferro rods, I've got pens, etc. It's awesome. So I'm going to go get to some delimbing and then we're going to talk about these axes one at a time. For overall performance, uh, first off we're going to talk about the bigger hatchets. Um, and some people would even consider these to be axes. So for the task that I did with the Gransfer and the pack axe was... Uh, dropping a couple of trees that I needed removed here. Now, these trees are about as large as you would ever cut down in a bushcraft environment. They'd make a great center pole for a shelter. They'd make great pieces for a bridge or other things, but you're probably not going to do work quite this large all that often. Um, however, chopping down a standing deadfall uh, that's this side size could be quite quite common depending on where you live. With this uh, type of work, the Grand's fur is a bit lightweight. So despite how similar they look on paper, um, there's a couple of things design-wise that we'll talk about more later. This hook, although it may look more aesthetically pleasing than the council tool, is much less comfortable. With this handle length cut down the way that it is, it's not really an axe. You don't slide here in your action. It's more of a hatchet. And so uh, that compounded with edge thickness, which we'll talk about later, makes this a tool that is good for smaller tasks. But what I did with it is outside of this tool's intended use, I personally would say. Whereas the very similar uh, council tool pack axe here can do this all day in comfort. I mentioned the other pommel might be more aesthetically pleasing, but man, you come down to this, there's no hot spots there. This is the perfect handle, the perfect thickness, much more comfortable handle. A little bit heavier head, a little bit longer handle, but thinner edge geometry. And we'll talk about this again in a moment, but the chopping that I planned to do with the Gransfer, I actually, the tree that I chopped down with the pack axe here was uh, larger in diameter and harder. And then I used the Gransfer and I actually finished the Gransfer's tree with this because I was just straight up not having a good time. Uh, 
So these are not supposed to be directly comparable axes, I would not say. Um, however, when you use them back to back, you really see some of these design differences that you might otherwise not even notice. If you used these two axes a month apart, you might think that they're pretty evenly matched. And that simply is not the case when it comes to chopping uh, on a bit larger project like this. Now with these two hatchets, I wanted to do some delimbing, but to be honest, I don't have anything really to delimb, so we're just gonna cut down some smaller trees. These aren't super hard, they're little maple, these trees, um, but they're hard enough. And uh, I think that although this isn't as practical as what I would have preferred to do, uh, we're on my property here and I've got some work to do and we're gonna do it with these hatchets. All right, and in comparing the council and the hardcore hardware, hardcore hammers or hardcore hatchets, wh whichever it may be, uh, things were even more apparent than with the Gransfer and the council. Um, this is a fantastic working tool. We'll talk about fit and finish again uh, in a moment, but uh, edge geometry, nice and thin. The weight right about where you, just right where you want it. Uh, thin cheeks, beautiful little tool. The biggest thing here again, the handle is a knockout on these council tool axes. The diameter and the shape is perfect. And being that they are based on traditional uh, proven uh, American axes and designs, uh, it makes sense. Hardcore hatchets, on the other, uh, on the other hand, a lighter. It's not a bad edge geometry. It's not a bad edge geometry at all. It's nice and thin. It does some small tasks decently. The head's a little bit odd. We'll talk about that in a moment. The handle's too thick. So if I need to grab the, this with two hands, almost like an ax, and do a little bit of work, I can more comfortably. And in one hand, I can do it much more comfortably. Uh, I, I've used this a bit, and yet after using these other axes, my hands almost didn't know what to do on this handle. Um, because the diameter, I almost grabbed it with two hands, and I was like, what am I doing? This feels so alien. So I, you really, it's a one-handed implement, which makes sense with the weight and the size, but the diameter, it's so thick that in doing this small amount of work, uh, already you could feel more fatigue because it's too large in diameter for my hand. Um, this is a much different tool than every ac other ax out here on the table. So let's get right into fit and finish, and we'll talk about this more uh, in a moment. We're going to get into a fit and finish and value here, and that's really where the bulk of this video is going to lie. Whoa, here I come. Well, I'm a coming. Oh, boy. Oh, talking about X's. Oh, yep. So, so the first thing that I want to say as we look at these for fit and finish and value, uh, the first thing I want to mention is the axe masks. Every axe mask represented here, I think, is fantastic. I don't have any issue with any of them. Um, Council Tool does offer the most factory axe mask options with uh, full cover masks that also have D-rings on the bottom so they can be worn on a belt or a baldric sling, which is nice. But there's, there's no issues with any of these axe masks. I think they're great. I, I wish the Hardcore Hammer all of them came with it, uh, included in the price. I don't know what the point of an ax without a mask is for someone who's actually going to use it. So the bombshell here today is going to be the hardcore hammer and we'll go ahead and get this guy out of the way here. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is this head shape. Uh, Hardcore Hardware has advertised this hatchet as having been the perfected hatchet. Uh, and that is not the, uh, that's not what, what I'm getting from this hatchet here. 
I, I think that the quality of the head is quite nice, but the geometry of the edge is quite odd. I believe this is the toe here. I'm a little bit uh, flabbergasted at the moment, so I could be wrong. But this should probably come out to about here, out a little bit further, more like a traditional framing hammer. And this handle is absolutely awful. That is not what you want to see on a premium axe, this horizontal thick grain. We have run out here, we have run out here. Run out is right here. Run out is where this grain stops here. And luckily the run out doesn't go diagonal from one side of the head to the other, but we've got just all kinds of stuff going on with this hatchet. Typically, that wouldn't be, I think, such a big deal on a hatchet of this weight. And because this handle is so thick, it's probably not going to be a strength issue. It could, but probably not. But the impression that I get is this. Hardcore Hammers took a standard Home Depot or Lowe's quality handle, slapped it onto a hatchet head, based off of like their grandpa's lucky framing hatchet or something like that, which was already mostly worn out because this is how these hatchets wear. And they're selling it as, as the best thing on the market. Um, they're actually even uh, defensive about this handle on their website in another place saying that this, uh, this urethane finish that they put on here uh, they say that people have mentioned it's not so good, but actually it is. The answer to uh, friction is calluses or whatever. Well, you really notice the difference between a cheap hardware grade handle like this and a premium handle like these when you start using them. There's no reason this handle's sticky. And between its stickiness from that urethane and its thickness... It's just a terrible using experience for people who actually use their tools. It's going to cause a lot of fatigue. It's going to cause a lot of friction. It's going to cause a lot of hot spots. And the, the feeling that you get from this hatchet is that this is a big, thick, cheap handle that has to be thick uh, because they don't know how to use good grain. It's urethaned because that's going to keep it from rotting or whatever. That's going to make it easier for them to buy and store more of them at a time. And the head uh, was not based on user experience whatsoever. Um, you'll notice this is the only axe out of this bunch that does not have the kerf exposed showing over the top here. Again, is kerf the right term? I do know the right term, but I don't know if that's right right now. But all of these other axes... The, the top of the handle is exposed, and what that does is it just makes a better bond. It's just stronger. It's just better. This is, this, is, this is a Lowe's or Home Depot quality hatchet. This is not the perfection of a hatchet. It is the tool that does not belong here in this comparison at all. So that uh, juxtaposed against the Council Tool Hudson Bay belt hatchet here. This is a phenomenal tool. You've got good grain going in the right direction. You've got the exposed pommel. And so we're here to talk about value, right? This hatchet comes in cheaper than the hardcore hardware uh, with the mask. And there's just no comparison between these two tools. This is, uh, this is a, a, a fantastic working man's tool. <sighs> All right, so let's talk about the grands here. Uh, I mentioned a little bit about it earlier. Um, this pommel is not nearly so comfortable as the council, um, but the handle is fantastic, and there's no question that this is a premium axe. And if it wasn't for the council tools, I could see myself going for this axe or hatchet in a heartbeat. I would probably get one that's a little bit larger, but the design is antiquated. And this is why. Gransfer has been premium for so long. They've been doing things exactly the same for so long. I think they've become stagnant. Metallurgy has come so far. Uh, Gransfer, um, having a mystery steel and admitting that it's recycled is a bad move. It is a bad move. Um, 
You can recycle steel, sure, but recycle it to an exact specification. Make it 5160 or 4140 or 1055 or whatever you want to make it, but quality comes in heat treat and you can never have perfect heat treat if you have mystery steel. So using a recycled steel and not ordering ordering it to a specific recipe, just like you would cook a specific recipe, uh, means that their heat treat can't be as good, which means that they have to have slightly thicker edge geometry. So you've got a slightly thick edge. It's thin behind the bit here, which is fine. You don't have any forged in cheeks or anything fancy like that though. It's a nicely finished ax, but there are just better options today. And so that brings us to the 24 inch pack ax. And guys, council tool, Here's the deal. They start with time-honored traditional American axe designs because people used to use axes to make a living. And when people used axes to make a living, axe designs were much better than the average hardware store crap that you get today. We have a 5160 head on both of these council tool premium axes, literally the perfect tool, uh, the perfect steel to choose for this, an incredibly, incredibly tough steel. We've got a thin zero ground edge here that just bites deeper than it should. I mean, it just bites deep. It's a, a beautiful ax uh, in and of itself. And we have a wonderful handle wonderful grain and a perfect shape. Again, the shape of these axes was based on traditional historic axes. All of those th handles were thinner back in the day and to make a thinner ax head work and still be equally strong or of superior strength, you have to have good grain orientation. And to do that, you have to remove more wood from the handle, which makes it more expensive. You have to uh, pick your wood with more discretion, which makes it more expensive, and then not slathering urethane over it means that you need to give it more care and give it a nice oiled finish, which makes it more expensive. So I would never recommend against someone get, getting a Gransfors. I think that they're fantastic. I'm not even here to tell you that they're a bad value because they're beautiful. They are quality tools, but the year is 2022. The time for mystery steel is over. Mystery steel means you don't know what's actually in your steel and your heat treat is not optimal. So you make up for your suboptimal steel just like in thicker handles by having a thicker edge. I'm going to go with a premium American forged head in a premium steel 5160 with a nice thin bit, make everything ideal for the task at hand and at a great value at $150. There's no doubt in my mind that dollar for dollar, the Council Tool Velvet Cut line is the highest quality line of knives and the best value, I'll say the best value line of production knives that's ever been made. And I am continually impressed by them. Very cool. Not a fan on, actually I am a fan of the Grands, not a fan of the hardcore hardware at all. Really, really terrible hardware grade uh, axe. And it's selling at a premium axe price, which I think is a shame. They make them look cool. They slap zombie colors all over them. This is not what you want to look for when you're looking for a working man's tool. That is things to attract the layman's eyes, the person that doesn't know what they're getting and will never know any better and probably won't use it anyways. That's what I've got, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, it's gonna sound like I'm being super harsh on the hardcore hardware or hardcore hatchets. If things have changed, they are American made, I hope. Uh, I hope the best for them. Maybe they've already taken my notes and improved their product since they made this hatchet. I don't know. The only way that I could say would be to use a newer one. But, you know, from the looks of their marketing, they already know that people are complaining about some of the things that they're doing. And instead of take, it looks to me like instead of taking notes and improving their product, they would rather just hype it harder. And uh, 
A capitalist society is one where an inferior business or an inferior project product dies. If that is the path that they take, they do not deserve to stay in business. Bottom line, there are better products on the market. If they watch this video or countless other videos, they take some notes and improve their product. That's fantastic because a lot of their axes that they're releasing, I think, look really cool. They definitely have a good aesthetic and stuff like that. I wish they weren't, you know, blowing Black Rifle coffee, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. It just sucks that, honestly, just slightly changing that head shape and offering a better handle would unquestionably make that axe worthy of being in this comparison. I think that their 40, 4140 steel and heat treat is good enough to be included here. Sadly, their design and execution is not. Um, so, again, I'll talk to you in the comments section below. And uh, I hope that you have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. And please check out the description box.